<laughs> Welcome, I'm Pamela Rikia from livingjoyfully.ca and this week Anna Brown joins me to answer some of the questions that I've received. Hi Anna. Hello. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that our Q&A conversations aren't about giving anyone a right answer. It's about contemplating the situation from the different perspectives of those involved, even getting a perspective from someone outside the situation. It's kind of like, I think of it as tilling the soil around the question, you know, maybe picking up a rock or two that we find to examine with an eye to helping not only the questioner, but anyone who's listening, find a connection to their lives or just in their understanding of how unschooling works. Because as we know, everything is connected. <laughs> so it's really interesting to see, uh, see things just from different perspectives, something that you might not have considered, um, just anything like that that might bubble up for either one of us as we contemplated these questions. So Anna, would you like to get us started? Yes, I do. <laughs> and, and I agree. I just want to say too, I think it's even not so much answering as discussing, you know, we're using these questions as just fodder for discussion that can maybe then help the person that originally posted it and the person listening to like, oh yeah, what about this? What about that? To give some yeah. things to me. Perfect. So um, question one is around missing our kids when they're busy. And this particular mom has heard parents on your podcast talking about hanging out with their kids and how much fun they're having now that they're unschooling. And she feels like since she stopped limiting screen time back in January, her boys who are 15, 13, and 10 are playing lots of online games. And so her question is basically, will they ever stop playing computer hate games? We can hang out together. Um, she feels like nothing is as enticing as disappearing off into fantasy land with their mates online all day. And um, she's feeling a little fed up and seeing much less of them, she feels like, than when they were in school last year. So, um, and I think this comes up a fair amount. You know, we hear people talk about this and like, what does that look like? Cause it, it, and I think it's maybe the first thing to check about ourselves is our own expectations because sometimes we start something with a picture of what it's going to look like and the reality of our family and personalities is very different so I think that's always good to kind of set aside those expectations and, and look at what we have but um but I also really do want to validate that it is hard I think when someone in the house has a really intense interest that doesn't include us so I feel like I'm, we're a family of four and I feel like at one time or another that's kind of happen to all of us where one or two are really into something that the other two aren't or the others aren't. And it does, you know, sometimes that can feel a little lonely or distancing. And so that's just a really good time to check in with yourself and, okay, how can I turn this around? How can we connect in a different way? Um, she also mentioned in her original question that she isn't really able to play the games at their level. And I get that too, because they're, even when I would want to try to do some of the games, I was terrible at them. <laughs> it just never, it wasn't really a fun way for us to connect. So, um, but I definitely wanted to take one of the points I wanted to make is to take that time to understand the games. So I could not play the games necessarily because it just, I wasn't that great at it, but I really did do some reading and I watched some YouTube and I understand pieces about the games and I really did listen. And th there are, I think some memes and funny things about like, who listening to one more, you know, hour of the video game talk, but really I kind of got excited about it because they're excited about it. And so, you know, just kind of being, off that energy and I think when when you learn the terminology when you're not just saying oh you're on that game again or you're off in fantasy land if you're like oh so what happened with the quest today or how oh, did you guys get that level and and they're like oh she's hearing us you know you you know what I'm what we're doing and then that opens them up to want to share more because if, if you keep it at that kind of generic distancing language I don't want to share the details with you. That's just a waste of my time. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's kind of important. Um, but also the other piece aspect of this question is something we come back to a lot is about conversations. Talk, talk to your kids, you know, tell them. I mean, I would say, oh my gosh, you know, we haven't, 
done this and so long and I really miss doing this and can we do this and what's happening and so I, I think things like that are coming to mind but what what are you thinking yeah I mean similarly but one of the first things I wanted to point out too was that she mentioned it's been since January and we're you know right now at the mid-August point so still it's that's only now. you know seven months and change and especially yeah. because her kids are older and they've had things limited for years, you know, you hear that in school for so many years, but it's not even yes. that it's what, um, how long things have been limited. So it can take lots of time and, uh, you know, well over a year from other unschooling parents too, who have taken their kids out of school or changed up their parenting style that way for them to feast on whatever has been in limited supply um, before they can really feel like they've got that choice to move on. So, you know, again, we don't know for sure if that's part of this, but it can be. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to mention that. Um, I wanted to mention the video gaming compilation episode that I put out a couple of months ago because it included some grown unschoolers talking about their passion for gaming growing up, where that is what they spent the majority of their time doing. And they talk about what they got out of the experience and, and what how it led to what they're up to now. So I'll, I'll put links to that in the show notes. And then um, along the same lines as what Anna was talking about, there's a few things that you can do now just to help you know, acknowledge that this is definitely an uncomfortable time. It's, this is a new way of being um, together. So it, it does really help to take some time to acknowledge the different pieces. One is noticing that your boys are having fun and really enjoying themselves, right? And reminding yourself that, you know, that is really important. Reminding yourself why that's really important, why engaging with things that we love is a valuable thing to be doing. You know, she mentioned um, that right now while they're playing, she's doing gardening and reading and pod listening to podcasts and stuff. Those are the things that she's enjoying and, and she's having this time to pursue her interests and realizing how that's valuable. Um, and you alluded to, I called it making um, learning about their games a project of my own, basically, right? Learning about this bigger picture stuff because it's not that, you know, uh, so often a lot of us aren't that good at games because we haven't grown up with them, right? So it may not be an interest or a passion of ours, as you said, but that's not the only way to engage with them, right? You can hang out with them, um, figuring out what they're doing, seeing them in action, Googling the games. Um, and you mentioned learning about more about what's going on in the game so you can have those conversations because truly like when you can ask how'd your quest go or they yeah. can come in and say hey mom so and so finally joined our party or whatever right. it is you're just showing that deep respect for that interest for what they're up to it's even not in for the interest itself but deep respect for the fact that they are so interested in it right and just imagine how different that feels to that versus you just not restricting their time. Okay. Right. You no, know, not restricting their time is great. That's a great first step. But when you're actually respecting um, and appreciating what it is they're choosing to do with their time now that it's not limited, that takes it that next level of connection and depth. And as you were talking about, now they're going to be excited to come and share with you right what's going on and it's just a whole new way to connect and and to live alongside each other and then again yo go ahead well i just want to say too that it's um not just about video games i think video games is kind of the buzzword that gets people amped up and blah 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 but but honestly what we're talking about is just communicating yep. whether they have a deep interest in theater they have a deep interest in archaeology they have those would still be things that like for me necessarily are not my thing but you know i could learn about it and know the terminology and be able to understand what they're saying and then that shows my interest in what they're doing just like when maybe they go oh you know, Pam, this cool thing about this podcast I saw, or this whatever, or this different piece, and you can be like, yeah, this was cool. So I think it, it's just uh, video games can cause kind of a visceral reaction in people, and it's not about that. It's just about passions and interests that sometimes differ. 
Exactly. No, I love that piece because it. you're right. It can be anything, right, that they're interested in. And this is a way to connect with them and to have that kind of close and respectful relationship, whatever it is. Um, and I loved your idea of of talking to them about this as well. It's not just walking in and saying, hey, will you come do this with me? No, you can go that deeper level, that deeper level of understanding yourself and saying, hey, I'm missing you. I'm missing you guys. I miss when we, you know, you may say when we did this or this, um, but it's not even about the thing. Really what you're looking for is that connection, right? So it can be like, is there something we can do? You know, is there a time when the four of us or the five of us or however many um, can do something together? And then even if it's gaming related, I mean, they know that you're not very good at the game itself, but it may be gaming, a gaming related thing where yeah come watch us when we're all trying to do this because this is a big piece or you know maybe we can all go for a walk or maybe it's you know you maybe in your playing around with your project you found you know I know there's that traveling orchestra or whatever that goes around playing gaming music you know it might be something related but different uh, maybe you find a documentary about creating a game or maybe there's a movie built in the world uh, set in the world of the game you know there's just so many possibilities where you can connect and just sharing that you're missing them that you'd like to do something that you can all do together and ask them for ideas you know it's just fodder for conversation and now they realize hey there she's just wanting to connect with me and then they'll have that in their head and they may they might not think of something right in the moment but you know a few days later they may say hey mom what about this Right. They're getting that insight into the why behind, because I think if you come at it, why why are you playing another game or haven't you been doing that a long time? They're thinking, oh, she's trying to control me and wanting to go back. She's judging how I'm spending my time. Like that's just kind of defense mechanism of how we react to things. As opposed to if you make it about you, that I message of, you know, gosh, I'm missing you. I loved when we watched that show or, hey, oh, you know, we haven't, I wanted to hear more about this or whatever. They can go, oh, she's wanting to connect with me. And, and I have seen time and time again, kids and people of all ages, they want to connect. So that is a draw. So not dangling, let's go to the park, you know, maybe the draw, but it's when they know you truly want to connect and hear them and be with them. That is a draw for people. Yep. And I found so often that when I think about it, I realize I jumped to a solution. Yeah. Yeah, And I'm, offering or I'm asking about a solution when rather I can just bring the problem. Exactly. No, I'm missing you. Yep. And then we can all come up with ways to do it. I mean, we, we think we're being helpful because we figured out here's a solution. I want you to get off the game and let's go do this. And yeah. then it's a yes, no thing. That's not a conversation. It's a, are you going to stop now and come do this? But I, I'm sure you can sense the difference between that, just like sharing the root of it and then everybody just having a conversation moving forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Our second question is about how the parent's personality might help or hinder unschooling. So dad is wondering if it's safe slash wise slash possible for parents who are themselves very laid back and relaxed to unschool their kids. What if the parents lack that motivation or drive and leave it to the kids to find their own way? Now, I found this to be such an interesting question. I really liked it. Thanks very much for asking. Um, Because in one sense, laid back and relaxed sounds really helpful in that we're not bringing our expectations into our relationships with our kids, right? We're not expecting things. We're pretty laid back and relaxed about the things that they're choosing. Yet, I also don't see leaving it to the kids to find their own way as unschooling at all. When you phrase it that way, it just seems neglectful, right? So I think there is this whole world between being laid back and leaving the kids to figure it all out, right? So that's really curious to think about. Um, If you're not excited and interested in hanging out with your kids and exploring the world with them, With them, I'm just curious what's inspiring you to choose unschooling in the first place, you know, because that's kind of the draw (laughs) from my perspective. 
Um, and that's also where being laid back can be an advantage, right? In that without that overlay of our expectations of how and what our kids should explore in the world, we can dive into exploring it through their eyes in the ways that they're curious about. But I don't think um, unschooling parents need to feel driven to introduce all the random things in the world to their kids, right? But I do think they need to feel motivated to provide their kids with the experiences that the kids are seeking out. You know, if they want to go to the museum or the park in the next town, you need to be motivated enough to do that. Or even just to figure out a way for it to happen. Right. It doesn't literally always need to be you doing all these things. But if there's something they want to do, you can figure out a way to make that happen for them. So I don't think being laid back personality wise is a hindrance to unschooling, but not wanting to actively engage with your kids and help them explore the world is. So that's kind of how I see those two, not as opposites, like you do this or you do this, but like living in that whole world in between. Right. And for me, it was the same. I mean, I, I felt like um, something I do when I talk to people about schooling, whether it's a conference or just one-on-one, -on -one, I am really early on, I'm like, unschooling is not the easy way out. <laughs> you know? Because, you know, I think there were lots of times when, you know, my kids were younger, I thought, gosh, if I just put them at a table with a curriculum, I could be over here doing this other thing. And, you know, that would be easier in some ways. But what I found for me is that the work of unschooling is joyful work because it's connecting with these people that I love, you know, and so that's what I love because I never really wanted to be a teacher, you know, like that wasn't a career that, you know, I was really inspired by. And so that's what I loved about unschooling was like we were exploring together. It wasn't me imparting knowledge. It wasn't me sitting people down. Um, but it is still work because especially for me, I felt like... Um, as an introvert, it stretched me in a lot of ways to be able to create opportunities and to follow through on things that they were interested in. And so, yeah, it's, it's definitely, I'm pretty laid back, but I, I, but I had to engage in order to create an unschooling environment that I felt like where my kids could thrive. But something I just want to caution about this question is because I don't know the reason behind it. Yeah. I think if we're looking at ourselves and asking that question, great. Yeah. So happy about that. But <laughs> if you're looking at someone else and making that judgment and saying they're laid back, they're not doing enough, they're not an active enough parent, then I would say, Whoop, let's just pull back from that just a little bit mm -hmm. because that that's not helpful, you know, and I think we've seen through the podcast and through our experience with other unschoolers from the outside, there can be long stretches of time where kids are doing very internal work, where it's we're homebodies and we're really absorbed in things at home. And so from the outside perspective, it'd be like, well, gosh, this family's doing field trips and going to the zoo and they're doing this and they're in this class and look at how active they are. Then here's this family that's not. But really, that's all being driven by the internal work that's happening with those kids. And so I, I guess I would just say, yeah, absolutely ask yourself these questions. Is this something I want to do? Is this how I want to be engaged with my children and my family? Is this what I want for myself? But let's not put that lens onto someone else because we really don't know what's happening in anybody's family and with any child at a particular time and what they're having to deal with. And so I guess I just wanted to throw that out there because as I reread the question, I thought, are we talking about like you know, somebody else? Or are we asking about ourselves? So that is brilliant. That didn't even cross my mind. And that is such an important <laughs> point because that's it. Like, like I had mentioned before, right? It's seeing the world through their eyes and the way they want to pursue it. And the whole point behind saying that is sometimes they are like introverted. Sometimes they are feeling like a, a cocooning kind of peer. Like you don't know. That's why as parents, not putting our expectations on that they will be forever a certain level of active. Right. Not useful, et cetera. So that's why laid back really isn't a measure of right. usefulness as a, as a parent. But then definitely 
not looking at somebody else's lives because there you have no clue what's going on inside right? Not in the parents, not in the kids, not in the connection between them. For me, um, I, the connection with my child is is a better barometer of most things, right? Um, because then I'm understanding, you know, maybe not to the level of detail. They may be a, a private child. They may be going through a, a, a time where they're feeling more private about things. Maybe they are still processing and figuring out things and they don't really understand yet. So it's all being respectful of their needs, but that's seeing it through their eyes. And when you're a step outside of that, outside that family, you you can't have that knowledge. Just have no idea at all. And and I think that just to reiterate for everybody listening too, so often we've seen that time of inward um, where maybe they're not going out of it has been a time of incredible growth. Yeah. You know. Leaps will happen as soon as, you know, we get through the stage that, you know, that it is such a valuable time. So it's not a time to be judging yourself or your kids or anyone else about, oh, we're not doing enough or not ever. As long as you're checking in and staying connected with each other and that's what everybody's needing at that time. I, we have found major growth happen from some turning really inward for, you know, a couple months even and whatever to just, it's just a season of needing to, and, and again, what we've seen is this just leap afterwards in different directions, growing, doing, it may be not that it's super active, but just yeah. growth and change and development happens in all these different ways. And one of the beautiful gifts of unschooling, you know, is to have the time for that. Yeah, no, and the, and the, and the space right? Without all that stuff that you're putting on top of it, because that that's totally what we've seen as well. And it's the learning and the growth, like, because I'm thinking of those, those leaps in self-awareness, those leaps in, in understanding, in the way they engage with things all come from those periods of quietness. It's like, I, I, can't, I do like the cocoon, yeah. Because you can't, uh, you know, metaphor, you can't see what's inside. You don't know what's going on, but you know, something's going, it's a quieter season, right? Yeah. And, and patience and trust and just connecting to see that they're not looking for something more right. and even to help them with that cocooning, you know? to make sure they've got you know, the foods, the comfort, the, the, whatever, the quietness, the, whatever it is that they're seeking out, that they have more of that so that they can embrace the stage that they're in at, at the time. And yeah, it's, it, like you said, it's something that you only see looking back, right? Exactly. It comes out of it. Just don't want to ever make anyone feel bad about that. So you don't want that kind of cajoling. Oh, let's just do this. Let's just do that. Like you said, I love that. You know, let's dive into that. Let's help make sure they have that space and that cocooning that you need. And if maybe that's not where you personally are, then you can get those needs met elsewhere. You know, and that's something we've talked about before, but you can go get those needs met elsewhere by still protecting this cocoon because there's things happening in there. You know, there are. And again, it's maybe leaps in self-awareness. It may be developmental leaps, you know, physical, you know, because we'll see that sometimes with little babies and kids, you know, there'll be kind of this really different feeling and all of a sudden they're walking or they've started new language or they've, you know, done whatever. It's the same for all of us throughout these stages. You know, we kind of come in and go out. And I wonder if we looking back at that first question for a moment, you know, you can maybe think of this time as a cocooning time for them too. Like yes. they're embracing and diving into something that has been limited before. Yes. Right. And they're just immersing themselves in that for now. And to try to predict when they may come out of it or, or what they may be gaining from it really is a futile game because you're going to see eventually, <laughs> you know, how it develops. So it, it always helped me in those times to just become more curious as in patient and curious. Like, I wonder where this is going to go. I wonder what this is going to look like in six months. And you know what? I almost always gave it at least a six month window because wow. we need that time. You know, it's not, it's not like bells and, and, um, test periods and all that kind of stuff. Human beings 
are don't like progress along a ladder. <laughs> no. you know what I mean, it's just it's all over the place, and that's the cool thing. But yeah, the the patience it and is. giving it space. I love your point, and I think you're really onto something with the first question because looking at their ages and how it's been a short amount of time, you know, diving into that interest of video games or sometimes it's watching television or it's reading books or whatever. It's, it's a way for kids that have been maybe overwhelmed by school and pressures and, you know, whatever they've had to deal with to really kind of funnel in and take control of their, you know, environment. And so that could absolutely be at play. So you don't want to be changing that still great to have that discussion of, you know, I'm missing you or what can we do together to figure this out, but, but also really protecting that space for them. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right. So question three, um, the next question is about starting unschooling with an older child. So this mom is considering unschooling her 14 year old. Um, she des describes it as he hates school and has trouble with critical thinking and reading comprehension and a lot of kind of school type measures. And she's just wondering if it's too late to get started. Um, and to clarify, I believe that, yes, they've been homeschooling. So I don't think he's in school. They've actually just been doing a very traditional model of homeschooling, but she's seeing this resistance and him not enjoying this time. And I mean, my short answer is it's never too late <laughs> to move to unschooling. Um, you know, because I think in the question, you know, she mentioned these kind of school type deficits and measurements and that type of thing. And, but she also said that he works hard in things that interest him. And, you know, it's kind of thinking, <laughs> um, you know, that's pretty much the case for all of us, you know, that when something interests us or strikes this, you know, light in us, we want to do it. Um, but this would be a dramatic change, you know, from what how she described their homeschooling life to this. So, you know, my suggestion would be to start with just open conversations, you know, talk about, I, I see you're not happy. I see you don't like school, that this isn't working. And start having conversations about what, what could it look like? What would you like it to look like instead? You know, we're talking about a 14-year-old. He's going to have lots of opinions about how he'd like to spend his time and what would that look like? What excites him? What, what is there things you want to learn more about? And so have more conversations versus just staying either imposing the homeschool like you are now or psh, we're throwing that out the window, you know, because I think that could be pretty confusing. I mean, we've seen that come up before, but I think as you have those open conversations, again, when we share what we're seeing, those observations, that person feels seen and they feel heard. Okay, she's hearing me. I've been telling her I don't like this and I don't like school and I don't like these pieces and we've just kept pushing through, but now she's seeing me. Now she's hearing what I'm saying. And then that slowly builds that trust to say, well, yeah, I don't like this, but I don't mind this. And I'm kind of interested in this. And, you know, then you just start to really learn about the person versus, you know, having these two people at conflict. I'm going to dig in and say, I hate school and I'm going to dig in and say, we're going to do it anyway, because school, I mean, what a weird term is that anyway, when you look at learning, I mean, it's just like, what does that even mean? It's kind of like screen time, you know, it's like, it, there's, it, there's learning, we all want, we're just learning creatures, you know, so it's like, if you can kind of set those definitions aside, and that deficit focus that school has, and, and instead build up the things that are interest, and that you know, get them excited and do, I think it would just be a really different dynamic between the two of them that would change very easily. But, but I do think if you just kind of throw everything out the window without a conversation, there's going to be a lot of confusion and maybe some hurt feelings really on both sides, but that's just kind of what came to mind. Yeah. And something that came to mind too, uh, um, uh, when she was talking about the critical thinking and the reading comprehension and stuff like that, it's the lens through which you see those as well. Because if he were to fully engage with the things that he finds interesting, like she said, he's, he's really smart and he can remember things his way. He can remember them visually, you know, not the way a curriculum wants him right. to, to remember these things. Cause I'll never forget because Joseph was in school for a few years, right? And I would go to the school and the teachers' meetings, and you know they would be saying, "Well, you know, he can't. He's 
struggles to read these books, these early readers. And I'd be saying, well, you know, at home, I've got these video game walkthroughs, literally 80 pages on a dot matrix printer. And he's reading and comprehending all of that. (laughs) You know, it wasn't the skill per se. It was a situation. It was the environment. It was, you know, that is boring to me and I'm not interested in that story. So I'm struggling to read that for you because this is something I don't want right. to do. It hold your interest. And so then how do you show your comprehension of something that is just, you can barely get through it because it doesn't hold your interest, you know? Exactly. So I think this, just like you were saying, having conversations and shifting the focus to the things that he enjoys and that he's interested in, you may see all, because these are like, background skills, right? This critical thinking and this reading comprehension, stuff like that, you know, that, that are going to be pertinent no matter what the topic is. So, you know, you can be thinking critically as you're looking through resources for the thing that you're interested in. Right. Right. You can be reading and comprehend, figuring out how to pick out the important bits Again, through doing research of the things that you're interested in, these kinds of skills. And that's one of the basics, you know, as you explore how learning happens in unschooling, even through a passion, when you think, oh my gosh, you know, their world is going to be so small because they're only interested in this one little thing. Um, But no, the skills in the world open up. That's just the lens through which you're exploring, right? There is so much to everything. There's so much context for everything. There, your, your skills, your reading, your writing, your communicating, your critical thinking, all those things can be done through the lens of anything, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I love that piece too. I think, um, you know, as you shift and look more through his interests, um, it's also, I think it'd be really helpful to just think of starting to have fun, more fun. How can we have more fun together, right? Because that's the way you're going to start seeing this stuff in action. You're going to, you know, not a test or not a module who's telling you how to think critically through this window, but you're going to start seeing this stuff in action. So that's the part where you're going to start from understanding and schooling, but actually seeing it in action and trusting that it works and being able to let go of some of those more formal pieces and seeing how it happens and how it works in everyday situations, right? I think you're going to find answers to all those questions that you have right now and discover that awesome person that your kid is just by releasing some of that and and letting letting the interests start to kind of lead your lead your days and lead your ways and seeing it in action. And and I guess I just kind of back to her question. I think now's a great time, you know, because here you have him 14 years old. He still has some more years at home. And so how great for him to kind of take this responsibility for what he's interested in and what he's wanting to do. But while you're there to share it with him and to figure things out and to answer questions and to, you know, be, you know, all that together. So I think what a perfect time to kind of start moving that because it's so bizarre to me, this idea that, you know, 18 comes or whatever arbitrary age a family decides. And then now you're on your own and you need to be deciding all these things you're interested in and what you want to do and what, and, and, you know, we see that floundering 20 something, you know, that's really never had a moment to do that because they've been just doing what they're told all along. So yeah, 14, 15, that's a great time to just really start and connect with each other and figure out what it is he enjoys doing and and help him do that. Yeah, no, that's a great point. It is anytime because it's a lifestyle, right? It's not, like you said, it's not that it ends at 18 and it's a lifestyle for the parent as well. It's the way we as a family are now choosing to live. So it goes well beyond the compulsory school years. I mean, I, I would you could shift this at any age, even when your kids are college age, you know, whenever you discover jeepers, I'm not going to use these conventional measures so much anymore. And that who we are as people is more important and connecting on a, you know, a real level 
is what's valuable to us. So at any time is fine. But the teen years are awesome, aren't they? Great. <laughs> <laughs> really are. <laughs> Okay, our last question connects back to the second question about parents' personalities, for me anyway. <laughs> Mom says that she's a type A personality and an avid rule follower, and they started homeschooling last year. She'd love to dive fully into unschooling, but is struggling with falling back on her old beliefs and fears. So I think the most helpful way to... to um, work through this is to do that work to question those rules those old beliefs those fears just one at a time one little thing at a time so you know what is that rule or belief trying to accomplish you're so you're going to do a little bit of digging for yourself what assumptions does it make like there are assumptions built into a lot of these rules. Do those seem valid to me? See, this is where we're bringing our piece in. Instead of conventional wisdom telling us what we should think, what do I think? Does it seem valid to me? Does it seem valid to our kids? Um, does it seem valid to our lives as a family in general? Are there situations in which that rule might not be the best path forward? You know, can I explain the reason behind the rule? Does it make sense? I love that piece because the next question then becomes, is it enough to just share the explanation behind it? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't need the rule. Now that I understand like at its root, yes. what it's about, I can just share what it's about and we can have that conversation and see what it looks like for us, each of us in our lives, right? Because I think so many times rules and beliefs are shortcuts to communicating those deeper ideas, right? It's just like, okay, you know, we summarize it in this, we quickly throw out the rule and, and let's move on. But with unschooling, part of that is that we have that time to share and to talk about those deeper ideas. And through those conversations, we all become more self-aware. Um, we have the time and the space to make choices that align with the kind of person we want to be. We have that space just to think about that, right? Not, you must follow all the rules and here's the rules and boom, no, no discussion, no thought. And if you don't do it, you're a bad person, right? We don't need those shortcuts in our lives we can actually figure out who we want to be, how we want to live, and, and why those things exist in the world. Because a lot, a lot of them boil down to common sense. But because they've been so generalized and just thrown in there, they lose that common sense. There's that critical thinking piece again from that last question, That's right? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> critical thinking about whatever it is we want to do in the moment. And I really think after you've done the first few, like it seems over, oh my gosh, every old, every rule and belief that I have, I have to process. But like, remember how we were talking about right at the root of things, they're the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's an interest in gaming or if right. it's an interest right. in whatever. Here too, when you dig into the, into these um, rules and beliefs, you find a very common foundation in them, I think. So after a few, I think it will get a lot easier. You'll find the similarity and, you know, you'll be like five minutes. Oh, oh, that's really just all about this. And we already, you know, think this about that. And the same thing with processing our fears, right? Because so often fears are based around not following rules mm -hmm. or expectations, right? Oh, if we don't do this, what's going to happen in the future? It's projecting not following rules into the future. That's, I think, what's where so many of our fears come from. So I think, you know, this process is going to tackle kind of all that stuff. And rule follower is fine. Like that type A personality, that's not um, a bad thing in this situation. Even you're you're just getting to the root. You're getting to the base of those rules. This is the person I want to be, a person who, you know, does X, Y, and Z or who believes X, Y, and Z. Part of your rules can be that I incorporate. We figure out a way to make it work for everybody in the family, right? So it's not don't throw balls in the house kind of rule. But, you know, at its root, we want to make sure, try not to break things. 
Right. Right. So we make choices moving forward. We don't follow the rules, but we make choices that help things not get broken. You know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely. And and I don't have it right in front of me, but I'm reminded of the episode with I believe it's Amy Martinez that was maybe just had just come out Mm -hmm. because she talks about that was their core personality is this kind of rule following and, and do it this one way. And she said from the outside, she's sure everybody thinks they've thrown all the rules out the window, but she feels like they've done this process just like you've said. Yep. Yep. Yep really started to look at, hmm, how do we feel about that rule? Is that rule serving us? And, you know, they still think, take, take things very seriously. So I think it might be interesting for this person to listen to that episode if they haven't. But um, something I wanted to say was that I feel like we have talked about how much unschooling brings up for us as parents. So it does kind of bring up these issues that we maybe had from childhood or teenage whenever. and. For myself personally, I find when I get, you know, mired and worry about the future or what someone else is thinking, you know, I just stop and I turn inward and I prioritize, you know, what are my priorities? Because that helps ground me in the present and all in the present, but also it grounds me to who I want to be like that. That's where I always come back to who do I want to be in the world? How do I want to relate to people and my priorities time and time again, it's my relationships. It's the connections with my husband, with my children, with my friends. And so that helps me set aside any of this fear or worry Because I know I'm tending to what's most important to me. And what I've seen is when I am tending to those things, the rest works itself out, you know, that I don't have to have carry these fears. Because when we're connected, you know, we're, we're working things out. And so that doesn't mean that everything is perfectly smooth all the time. So I don't want that to be the takeaway from that. But what it means is that we have this foundational relationship and this connection, and that because of that, we're able to handle what comes our way. And honestly, when we think about that, that's so much more powerful because, you know, this worry and trying to control the future, which is kind of what this piece is talking about, I'm going to make sure they study this or do this so they don't have this problem or so that, you know, so this is this false belief that we can control the future. But What's so much more valuable and incredible is when we have this relationship and foundation, it doesn't matter what the future holds because tough as it is, whatever happens, catastrophes, because we've all had them, you know, we've all had tragedies and and terrible things happen. But what I have seen time and time again is our foundation and our connection, we get through it. We get through it together and I don't need to be fearful of those things. So that's where I want to put my focus is on that connection and on building relationships and on communication and on talking because that is what, that's the only thing we can do. That, that's what we can do. We can take care of this moment in front of us and me worrying about the future isn't going to change it or make it better. So <laughs> um, I think to get there, you just have to trust, you know, we've talked about that so many times and do some of the work to peel back the layers and look at the mirror and look at your children and see where are all these things coming from and, you know, tune back inside and back to your connections. And I think it, it will just be so much more clear. I mean, that that's my true belief. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it really is about, about the process, right? It's not about um, the thing, right? Yeah. Because once once you see time and again that taking this space is time to sitting with the discomfort of whatever is going wrong in the moment or whatever fear you're having, whatever rule is bubbling up for you that you really want to just shout out, <laughs> you know, it's okay to take that time. We don't need an answer a right answer and it doesn't need to be fast like those are the conventional beliefs that get in the way for us right so those are the things that you're going to find that you're going to be working on but once you see time and again like you said taking that that time that that process to think things through to talk to each other to stay connected you find that that's the foundation 
on which you can move through all those times, the good times, the bad times, all the times. Because I know it, it does seem so often that people think that life must be so easy when you're when you see it this way you know but that's what we have a process for <laughs> because life happens right it's it's not like things are smooth and and everybody's you know everything's going well for everybody all the time and la 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 but it's still a perspective it's still um you get to a point where you trust that you can get to that you'll get to the other side yes that there is another side that is that is what helps and and knowing you've done it so many times and that's some that's one of the biggest things the most important things i think you know for my kids growing up with unschooling and this kind of lifestyle is knowing that oh i have no clue i'm how i'm going to get through this but i know i will you know and and understanding themselves just how how however it works for them to think about it to process it to figure out what they think about it to brainstorm ways they might try moving through it to take a little step and see what happens you know it's all about the process not about the rule or the expectation or anything around it it's it's more just about gaining the experience in moving through things. Does that make sense? <laughs> it does. I mean, and, and I think, again, it, it may feel different. You know, I think it might feel like a little bit of a different paradigm for people coming um, at it from yeah. a different way. But, but again, I think just look in and find those priorities and, and, and tend to those connections. And I think you'll just see, oh, okay, wow. Yeah, this thing that used to be a stumbling block, now that we have this connection, we're able to talk to each other and move through it much faster. And so then you'll start building those experiences, yeah. both of you building those experiences. So just like you said, so then when you hit this kind of brick wall, you both are like, okay, this is tough and hurts and stings and I don't like it, but you know what, we're going to figure it out because we know that we're trusted partners and that's the difference. So in that way, our lives are easier because, yeah. you know, we have these foundations and trusted partners and, and these connections, but that doesn't mean that life is necessarily <laughs> easier to us. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, There's a yeah exactly. I'm still so grateful for it because I, I feel very joyful about my life and all those things, but there are hard moments and, and difficult times and all of that. But but I know I and have this trust of, of, you know, my kids and my husband and my friends. And that's what gets gets you through those tough times. Yeah, no. And I think I, what thought occurred to me as you're saying that, because that is awesome, because I would have considered myself a rule follower and yeah. I don't feel like I've changed fundamentally as a person. I think maybe what I've done is just included more people, included my kids you know, and my, including my family in the lens through which I look at things, right? Yeah. Like rule following was things make sense. Right. Right. Like at right. first when I was younger, the rules made sense because that's what I knew. So really as a, you know, fundamentally, I was a person who really needed things to make sense. <laughs> at one time that was rules. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So this is interesting. Yes. Yeah, so I too would consider myself a rule follower. I am never late. I always, you know, do these things like that's kind of, these are important things to me, but, 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 but there is this critical thinking piece. You know, I feel like what we have and, and because I want it to make sense. So the underlying piece is not to follow anybody's arbitrary rule. It's does this make sense to me? And, and that I have continued. Because that's the questioning, you know, and, and so maybe things that people consider rules, you have to send your kids to school. Well, that's not a rule, you know, <laughs> We're, you, you can see that that's not a rule. But so maybe then it's stepping back and going, is that what is that a rule? Where does that come from? Just like you talked about, you know, where, what are the origins of that? Why is it there? What is the purpose of it? And, and does it serve me and my family and my children? And so, yeah, I don't think that 
to be an unschooler, you have to be like, woo, throwing everything out and whatever. And I, and I love that about the Amy Martinez interview as well, because she is very conventional in a lot of ways. And yet she's doing this thing that some people consider unconventional, but you and I both have talked about this before. Like we don't get it. Like what's unconventional <laughs> about, you know, having these relationships and just, you know, we're humans. That's what we're here for. So anyway, that's a little aside, but it is, I think that's an interesting point. So it's not throwing the rules out. It's just, maybe pulling that lens, that new lens to look at it. Yeah, no, I, exactly. I love that. And I think that's a great place to wrap it up. It's a, those yes. are great questions to ask yourself. And it really is all about seeing things and having them figuring out how they make sense to you. Because how can you live any other way? Right. Living any other way is going, is going to feel fragile. Really, right? You're going to be buffeted around by other people's opinions because if you're not understanding um, and living in ways that make sense to you, you're always going to be looking outside yes. to tell you what to do because you need somebody else to have it make sense. And anyway, anyway, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. I really appreciate yes, it. It's always happy to be here. It is so much fun. And thanks, everybody. Uh, for the questions and I wish everybody a lovely day. Yes, bye. Bye.